Okay guys, so today I am going to show you how to get your convex hull guide geometry to look like your concave um, guide geometry. Because basically, I've worked out from watching many tutorials is we never use concave because the objects fall through things, it's a lot slower, it's much more inaccurate. So we need to work out how to get our convex hull to work with it and to get it to look more like this. Uh, this is all based off of a tutorial from Scott Pagano. I am very new to Houdini, I am new to effects, and he is a very good um, tutorial maker, so I highly recommend watching his stuff. Um, it's just the tutorial I'm watching currently is a version 15 of Houdini. We're up to version 18 now. I've even watched other people's tutorials on how to deal with this. And they work for some circumstances, but for this really specific circumstance that I'm going to show you um, from his tutorial, it uh, doesn't really work. So I'm going to show you how I worked it out. And this is purely just to help people get through this because um, there isn't an update to it and I can't find the answer anywhere else. Uh, so that means I'm also using his geometry from his tutorial because I don't like really want to have to set up a whole different thing just to show someone how this works. But please do follow his tutorial, it's his stuff, he's made it. This is just purely to help someone else who is stuck at this point, because um, I think his tutorials are fantastic and he explains things super, super well. And again, I just can't find it anywhere else. If I also don't explain things 100% well, I apologize. Again, I'm very new to this. I come from a modeling, layout, animation background, not effects, uh, not node-based programs. So we're just gonna go for it. Um, so um, I've got the scene set up here, uh, there's a ground, there's this uh, shell box sort of casing that we have. It's made up of 62 pieces and basically um, what Scott ends up doing is we um, apply an art rigid body dynamic to it, it falls to the ground, it breaks up into the 62 pieces it is. However, when we do that, um, it doesn't interpret it too well um, with the... Uh, convex geometry. So I'll show you how that works. So we've got our shell. I'm going to apply rigid body dynamic RBG glued objects to it. Click on that, hit enter. We now have a dot network for it. And if I look at our shell, and if I go back to where our object is, if I look at our shell and go into our bullet data, I can go and hide our geometry and show our guides. And then I'm just gonna make them a little bit closer together. But so I'm gonna show you the difference. Currently we've got this convex hull, which is gonna be a lot more accurate, but you can see it is just creating a whole face here. If I go to our concave geometry, it cuts it in really nicely. So we wanna recreate that, but on our convex hull geometry but while keeping our pieces together. So this one's a bit different to other tutorials that I've seen because we are keeping all of the original pieces together, but we're gonna fracture them more. So say we start off with 62 pieces, let's fracture them into 400 pieces, but we still want those 400 pieces to fit into the bounds of the 62 pieces so that when it falls, they still stay together, but our guides interpret it as the 400 pieces because when we've broken this down even further, it, they're no longer concave pieces, they just become a whole bunch of convex ones and it interprets it a lot easier. So I'm gonna show you how I worked that out in version 18 of Houdini. So if we go into our object, we can see a whole bunch of nodes have been made. I'm not gonna explain them because I don't know how to explain them because I'm not that good at Houdini yet, but I can show you how to get this to work. So let's just make this space a bit bigger. So um, we're going to do everything after our setup packed prims. So our setup packed prims, it automatically made and it shows you it's got 62 pieces on the object under the name attribute. Um, so there's 62 names and it's a point attribute. So if we go into the geometry spreadsheet and we click on our setup packed prims, you can see there's a name attribute and it's applying uh, numbers zero to 61 to each piece. So the 61 pieces and they all have a name and that's how they are kept together. So that's the information we want to transfer over. Scott explains this a lot better than me. So please watch his tutorial on lynda.com <laughs> um, if you want a better explanation. 
I'm going to go back to the scene view, but I'm just going to show you how we ended up getting this to work. So first off, we need to unpack this information. So we're going to do an unpack node. So I've unpacked it, attached the setup packed prims from there. So that's really nice. Unpack that. Um, when we unpack it, you can see we now have 1,600 points and pieces. Um, and our name attribute is now a primitive attribute, not a point, which works for what we're doing. Um, we're going to have to switch it back later though. And so this is where um, things get different from Scott's tutorial. So he does a for each node. However, the update has meant there's like six for each nodes instead of just one. Um, and his for each node basically creates a sub network, um, which then he applies everything that I'm going to do to it. Um, and then it still keeps the 62 pieces. I couldn't get that to work with a normal sub network, but what we want is a for each connected piece. So for each connected piece, we're going to connect that together. And basically everything that we do between these connected pieces, it's going to choose a single piece from our object up here. We're going to apply all of our stuff to it. And then we are going to have um, this for each end happen and it applies everything within here to every other piece. So we're still keeping all 62 pieces then, um, even though we're only applying stuff to one. If we applied it to all of it, we have to pack everything back together for it to work in this whole setup. It'd pack it back into one piece rather than the 62. Now that might not make sense yet, but uh, you'll see what I mean. So uh, what we need to do is go to our connectivity node, change our attribute name from class to name, because that is the attribute we're following. And the same on the for each end node that needs to become the name as well. And it'd be whatever attribute we're trying to um, keep. So currently it's this name attribute on here. So there's two ways of doing this. I'm going to show you Scott's way because I think it gives a better result, but there is also a slightly easier way to do it. And I guess it just depends on the situation we're in. So I'm just going to show you both and you can choose what you want to do. So I'm going to create a VDB from Polygon node. And that is going to make this into a volume. Um, so if I actually show you this for each begin, it's only selected one piece. Then we're going to create it into a volume. We are going to turn on fog VDB and turn off distance VDB and change the voxel size to 0.02. That way it's just filled in the piece nicely. And now that we have the piece, we are going to do a scatter node, which will allow us to scatter points along this VDB. It's going to automatically scatter a thousand. We only need something like 20, but this is where you get the control over how many pieces you actually want to scatter. So I'm doing 20 for now. And then we need to fracture it along these scatter points. So we're going to create a Voronoi fracture node. And with the Voronoi fracture node, we need the scatter node into the second input. And we need the for each begin one node into the first. And then we need the output of that put into the for each end. No, sorry, for each end. And so we can now see we've got these nice fractures going on. Now, so all of these are separate pieces for now. So if I do an exploded view, if I could spell explode correctly, that would be good. Uh, we can see, once I go to the explode view and change it to points, it's exploded into a bunch of different pieces. So that's how we can see what we've got. Also doing something weird there by adding that in there. Anyway, so we've got an exploded view. Um, we need to pack this all back together first. So now that we know that that's working with the exploded view, I'm just going to disconnect that. Um, and you can also keep track of like what's happening. We still got the name attribute, we've got more pieces, um, but we need to pack it back together so that it'll work in our simulation. And once we pack this piece back together, it's gonna to be stuck together as one whole piece, but one whole piece with a whole bunch of breaks in it, but it will still stick together now. And we can see that it's one piece. However, our name attribute's gone, so we need to bring that back. But first I'll just show you at the end of the for each node, it now will apply all of this information to all the pieces. So if I go to our wireframe node, you can see it is broken up into many, many more pieces than it was before. 
which is nice and that we are back to our 62 pieces we're just missing the name node uh, the name attribute and I don't know if at this point we still need it um, and that's where my lack of knowledge in Houdini uh, fails me but I'm just going to do it because that's what everyone else has been doing so far so I assume there is a need for it somewhere down the line. Uh, you can also use your exploder view now to see that your pieces are going to stick together. So um, how do we get that name attribute back over? Well we're going to do an attribute promote where is my promote oh that is not a promote <laughs> uh, promote and so we're promoting the name attribute that is on the for each begin node so it's there it's a primitive attribute so we're going to grab it from there put it over here uh, on our settings oh god that's an attribute hey what am i doing ah it's not working attribute promote <laughs> sorry guys so we're going to pull that over. It's going to complain because uh, we need to make this a primitive because we're getting the primitive name attribute. And then on our drop down, it will show up and we're changing it to a point. And then we need to do an attribute transfer node. And that attribute transfer will allow us to transfer this attribute to the end of this node hierarchy. So we plug both of those in. Put our display flag on we've got our whole box and if we go to our information tab we've got 62 pieces still with the name attribute in our point um it's a point name attribute point attribute called name sorry confusing um but anyway so that's what we've got so far and then the only thing we need to do is now change this doc import network to the end there so our simulation will work so we can see that we've got all of our pieces and let's see how it interprets it in our auto dot network. So I go back in there, go back up to my shell. And so we're on convex hull currently, and we want it to look like the concave or something similar. So we're on convex hull and we just need to click create convex hull per set of connected primitives. And you can see how it's now carved in. It's been sort of like bumpy in that. So there's definitely some different probably settings we can tweak with this thing, but overall, that's how it works. So I'll now make our ground just a collision object so we can see it fall to the ground and still only break into those 62 pieces. So if I make it a static object and then I hit play, you can see it's only breaking up into the original 62 and not more pieces than that. Um, so our collision geometry is working nicely. Now, the second way of doing this is pretty similar, but there's only one node for these three points. Um, and I found that it works for some situations and not others. So I guess this just depends on what you're doing. So we need to create an unpack node and unpack it again, same thing. We create our um, for each connected piece nodes, connect that in. We need to change the connectivity node attribute to name and again the for each end known attribute to name. And then in the middle here we are going to create a convex uh, a convex decomposition node. So if I look at our piece, we've got a single piece. Then if we go over to our convex decomposition node, we can pull this slider down and you can see it starts breaking it down further and there's a convex hull option that we have on. Now, it obviously doesn't give you that many iterations, but it should be enough to work. But that's where I think this other method might come in handy for things that are more complicated. So I have pulled that down to about 0.25. We still need to then pack it back together. And we're technically just packing the single piece back together so far. So we pack it back together, look at our information, one piece, one point and everything, but our name attribute is gone again. And then if we go to the end of this node hierarchy, it's now done it to all of our pieces, but we've still got 62 pieces there. If I go to our wireframe, you can see they're all cut up more. 
So uh, we still need to transfer the attribute over again. So we're going to do an attribute promote to promote the name attribute. And obviously, my mouse is a little bit funny. OK, so we're going to promote that over there. Again, it was a primitive called name. And then it's going to become a point. And then we need to transfer that attribute over with an attribute transfer. Bring these together. And then you would put your job import node under here. So let's see how that works in our dot network. So if I turn that off, this would be the original convex hull. And if I turn it on, you can see it breaks it up into some nice pieces as well. And it should just simulate into the same pieces. And so that is how you get convex hull to work over your concave, which is really nice. And this one's a little bit more, I guess I felt complicated than some of the other things because we're trying to still keep it into the original 62 pieces of our object that was simulated. So hopefully this helps you guys um, keep going and working this stuff out. Uh, maybe it was really obvious how to work this out, but because I'm quite new, I just, it took me like a day and I didn't think I was ever going to work it out. So hopefully this helps someone else along the way. Um, and again, please do look at uh, Scott's tutorials if um, you're interested in learning. He's really good. Um, and also, if you didn't know, lynda.com through different library services is free. So you can check out and see if you can get it free like I can because different library services pay for it. You just have to have a membership with the library, which is free. Um, so that might be something interesting to everyone else. But yeah, his tutorials are fantastic. So I'm going to continue with that. And hopefully this helped you guys out in some sort of way. If you have any questions, do ask them. I can't guarantee I'll be able to answer them because I'm still new to everything, but you know, I'll give it a good go. Thanks guys.